And we know that not just sickle cell warriors, but Black patients are often undertreated for pain due to racial biases in medicine. How do these misconceptions about pain tolerance impact sickle cell patients specifically? And how do we build trust between sickle cell patients and the medical community in our present day? I'm so glad that you framed it that way because, because it really is about the medical community having to earn that trust from our patient population, from our warriors, and, and not the other way, way around. I think the, the racial impacts of this disease, the fact that this is a unique disease and that it largely is impacting black and brown people, touches every aspect of the way by which we understand the disease, the tools that I have as a provider in my toolkit to be able to manage patients with the disease, the research that I'm able to do, the way we're able to move the needle forward or backwards in the, in the way we take care of this disease, it's all impacted by race. If you compare sickle cell disease, for example, to cystic fibrosis, a comparison that I think probably many of your listeners have heard many times before, you can see the stark contrast, right? Cystic fibrosis, horrible disease, terrible, terrible illness, not at all to demean the illness in any way, but largely a disease of white people. Sickle cell disease, largely a disease of black people. Incidence of sickle cell disease in this country, much higher than that of cystic fibrosis. And yet, we're outspent at the NIH three to one. We're outspent by industry funding two to one. We're outspent philanthropically 80 to one. And when you compare sickle cell disease to hemophilia, which is you know, another disease that I take care of as a hematologist, hemophilia is federally funded. The federal government sets a standard of care. They deliver millions and millions of dollars to hemophilia treatment centers around the country to be able to meet that standard of care. And at the end of every year, if they don't use that money, the hemophilia treatment centers return those millions of dollars to the federal government. And it is written expressly into the letter of the law that those leftover dollars cannot come to sickle cell disease. So the foundations have been stacked against sickle cell disease right from the beginning. And it impacts everything from the way that we're able to conduct studies to my ability to provide basic access to care for my patients.